as you all know, Dr. Ford Brewer, this is the PrevMed channel. Uh, my name is not Dr. Ford Brewer. My name is James West. I'm hosting it uh, in lieu of Dr. Ford Brewer being on vacation this week. Uh, he is off again, hiking in the mountains out West and enjoying some much needed and, and much deserved relaxation. Uh, and in his stead, I will be covering today's topic. My name is James West. For the regular listeners, you know, oftentimes I host and co-host with Dr. Brewer. We are business partners in the primary care business, and uh, I am located down in the, the Gulf Coast where we are opening a series of prevention clinics, primary care clinics, to address with patients hands-on many of the issues that you, you hear us cover and have covered for years through the PrevMed channel. So thank you very much for joining us. It is our privilege and pleasure to to host and to cover the topics today. The topic today will be very technical. Uh, many of you may have heard the statement before, style over substance. So Dr. Brewer obviously is the substance and when he's able to join, I guess he figures he just wants someone with a lot of style to cover, cover for him all the looks and style. And then, you know, he has all the breaks. So having said that with my tongue in cheek, we'll get started today. Our topic today is gonna to be very interesting. It's uh, as we will discuss in a moment uh, after we launch, it will be around stress test and the technical um, effects that, that using stress test, the various kinds have on uh, isolating and identifying uh, coronary disease, vascular disease and uh, ischemic stroke and heart attack risk. So. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to the comments are to your right. So please everyone jump in, add any comments. We'll do a question and answer period as best as we can at the end of it. And your comments and questions are probably today even more wanted because your comments, particularly those of you who listen, who are providers with experience or even people who, who have some of the life experience of what we'll cover on the topic of stress tests, DKGs, ECGs and so forth. Some of your experience and some of your insights will bring great value to us today. So with that, I'm going to ask Gilbert Aspen to go ahead and launch uh, the presentation. Uh, so we'll take a quick, quick break for a second. As soon as, as that is done, we'll start back with the presentation itself. Many of you know that uh, Dr. Brewer and uh, Todd Eldridge recently finished a book that you hear us talk about a good deal, Prevention Myths book. It's a stress test, a lousy way to measure is you know, our topic today. And that's pretty much the subject of the book that they published. I have a copy of it, Prevention Myths. And it's why stress tests can't predict your heart attack and which tests actually do. Uh, we've covered many of the many of these topics for for years on the PrevMed channel, but the book is now available, and basically we'll summarize a, a little bit of that today in our presentation. So it's a technical book. I mean, this this I laugh with Dr. Brewer. This is very well researched, very well documented. Uh, probably the best book you could read right before going to bed because it will you have to you have to have the discipline to read through it superb information, very, very needed in our medical community, but be prepared to read through the, the, uh, the technicality of it. But it's a great book and I appreciate him writing it. And, and it's a lot of what we're gonna speak about today, the prevention myths, particularly around atherosclerotic plaque and cardiovascular disease. So as you see, uh, in the past, we've covered a lot of these topics, including supplements and uh, testing and looking for these hidden diseases, particularly in people who have diabetes. So today we're going to cover that topic. But before we do, remember, uh, you have access to all of our webinar programs. So a little bit of a sales pitch. You can go to care.prevmedhealthwebinars or prevmedhealth.com and be able to look at the various webinars that we uh, present, including insulin resistance, plaque, which uh, cor coronary uh, uh, plaque is, of course, you know, the culprit for many of the heart attacks and strokes that some of you have suffered, family members have suffered, or that you are at risk of having. And then, of course, we have the supplements webinar and the information around what is good, what is uh, not good that 
that you can take. And we're always, you know, Dr. Pru and I and, and others in our, some of you in our uh, circle of friends and advisors are always looking and, and pursuing studies and information to give us a constant update on what is out there that we can do. So watch those webinars. Those are great. We also have our online courses. Particularly popular is the Heart Attack and Stroke Prevention Conference and the Cardiovascular Information Course, as well as the Insulin Resistant Course. And we, we beat on the same drum. These, these courses are fantastic. We recommend you take them. I wish that everyone, particularly in the insulin resistant course, so many people have this, this condition of insulin resistance and uh, they don't understand the severity of it, the risk of it. And, and unfortunately the nomenclature that we have in the medical world often will say things like, well, you have a touch of sugar. And I wish we could eliminate that statement altogether because that's said in such a way that oftentimes when we're talking to patients, They'll say it as if uh, it's not really that concerning. And just imagine the doctor going, eh, you got to touch a melanoma, but it's a small one. Don't worry. It's just a few cancer cells. I uh, just, you know, it's only in your brain. There is just no way clinically that we would address something like cancer with that nonchalantly. But unfortunately, we, the course will do a great job of, of uh, you know, underscoring how important it is if, if somebody ever says you have a touch of sugar, well, well, that may mean full diabetes that's just undiagnosed and at best insulin resistance, which creates a disaster throughout your cardiovascular system and, and, and your major organs and even with risk of Alzheimer's and others. So great courses. I know people love these courses. We take them online. I recommend them highly. And we have the monthly subscription plan. So I encourage you to go look at the website, consider signing up for a monthly subscription where you can pay this subscription price and you have access to the courses. You have the members only webinars, you have access to the supplement store, lots of great information. And of course our website, we always say, go to it, peruse around, who knows what you may, may find. We also are giving away some of these courses and drawing. So you can go, as you see the links here on the page, winthrill.com story and sign up for winning some of these courses for free. We do a drawing weekly and hopefully uh, some of you may win those courses and, and be able to take them and improve your health. And of course, as we said, Prevention Myths, the book, we encourage you to order it. You can order it off Amazon and uh, pass it around, read it. There's a lot of fantastic information there. Now, having said that, let's talk about our topic this morning, Prevention Myths. The stress test, a lousy way to measure plaque. And, and the reason for that, we'll start by explaining the foundation of what a stress test is. Many of you have had these. I've taken a stress test, an exercise stress test as well. Many of you have taken, and if you have it, I'll explain what it is. It's a procedure, it's a procedure used to measure how the heart works during physical activity. It typically involves an assessment of a full function while exercising on a treadmill. As you see in the image to the right, they attach you to uh, all these electrodes. I highly recommend to men who uh, have a lot of hair on their upper body, just go ahead and get that out of it. You know, shave that off. You may look like Bigfoot uh, going in. You'll look like Bigfoot with a lot of spots coming out. So for those of you who have done it, uh, you know, you, 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 you don't want that Velcro, uh, experience, but they put, they put the electrodes across the chest, of course, in various strategic locations They connect it, of course, to the, uh, to the reader and then ha start having the patient depend on their, their fitness, their age and so forth, start exercising, walking or running on the treadmill while monitoring your blood pressure and while looking at an EKG and what they're measuring and what they're looking for, of course, is blood flow. We'll talk about that in a second. Sometimes because of the conditions, my mother, for instance, uh, who passed away a number of years ago, but we'll talk about her a little bit and her experience uh, in doing this. But once you get into certain uh, conditions, they may just do a drug induced heart stress test as opposed to uh, an exercise uh, stress test. But some of you may have had those and, uh, of course, there's beginning to be broad agreement that uh, it's overutilized in order to predict some of this disease. So you'll hear it referred to as stress EKG, exercise EKG, 
exercise electrocardiogram and, and, and other names. And you'll see methods, a nuclear echo, drug induced. Uh, so you may have had an echo, you may have had a nuclear, you may have had a drug induced, but they're all the same. So we have Lonnie's story here. Now, for those of you, we always have a few OCD people on here, which is great. I'm one of them is when the PowerPoint came back two minutes before we started, I found a spelling mistake on the slide. So because of my own OCD, I'm going to recognize it, that Lonnie turns into Looney a little bit later in, in, in the third paragraph. I apologize for missing that. Um, you know, maybe, maybe we have more loonies, uh, I'll be one of it than Lonnie's, but Lonnie's stress test story is very similar to my mother's stress test story. So this is a true story of one of Dr. Brewer's patients, uh, prior to him becoming a patient, he was 41 years old, about 15 years ago, he had funny feelings in his chest. He went to the ER and had a stress test run. He was worried about the flutters that he was feeling and his annual stress test, uh, stress test and cardiology results. So they put him on the halter monitor and, and had some paroxysmal supraventricular uh, contractions, uh, but was told, go home, you're fine. Uh, you don't need your annual stress test and so forth. But he very quickly had an event. My mother was the same way, telling you the personal study story. My mother, when she was 56 years old, which this would have been in the late 90s, about 96, 97, um, she was having over the course of a week she was she had diabetes she was diagnosed with diabetes she was overweight at the time uh, and she lived a very high stress life because she was a primary caregiver for my little brother who had uh at the time what was called uh diagnosed as cystiocytosis x but now called langerhans cell carcinoma and he had had you know just a tremendous amount of health issues as a child growing up and she was the primary caregiver so she had all of the conditions that led to lead to uh, cardiovascular disease. And she was having issues very similar. Went in, said chest pains, shortness of breath, uh, and they ran EKG. Then they ran a stress EKG and they came out and said, you're fine. We, we don't see any. Within 24 hours, she had a major heart attack and stroke both and was three weeks in intensive care in a coma and very surprised that she survived. And from that point forward, they could address her heart disease. They did, they did a cabbage and so forth, uh, and saved her life, but she had heart failure issues and all kinds of uh, lifestyle issues. And she passed away, unfortunately, way too young in her early seventies. She lived another 14, 13, 14 years, but with compromised health. And that was a long time ago before we knew a lot of what we know now, but it was the genesis of, of so much of what we I've done over the last several years of work we've done. Because when you see that and experience that with people that you love in your family, you become a missionary, you become an evangelist for uh, better testing, better health, you know, not ignoring the obvious, not just hoping for the best. So Lonnie's story, my mother's story, and so many of you uh, who listen have, have very similar stories of, of people disregarding or using only the stress test. And the problem with the stress test, as you see before you, we, we have an example of from the negative ECG responses all the way to the positive standards where there's no ST segment depression, there's J point, J point only uh, depressions that are the upsloping ST segment depressions. And, you know, all of these are the, the concept that underlies, and we'll talk about in a second, is just very simple. How is, is it, and it's the fatal flaw, by the way, as you said, is how is the flow? They're looking at the flow. It's very similar to looking at a river running. You know, what's the flow? Where's the flow in the bends of the river? And the assumption, the fatal flaw is that, that they can read that flow and just of, and, and, and predict what the occlusions may be in the arteries as a result of the flows. And it's not really always an indicator of the ischemia that may exist and in the plaque that may be there, because oftentimes the, uh, we're not picking up that hidden plaque. And furthermore, there's other complications such as abnormalities for people who have enlarged hearts or leaky heart valves that throws the test off as well. So it doesn't measure plaque. And as, as you can go back and read, those of you who haven't 
seen either the plaque webinar or gone through the plaque study. If, if we look, if we did a cross section and looked at uh, an, an artery, you know that you have the blood flow coming through the, the, the artery, but you have in the, in the endothelial lining is where the plaque is building up. And oftentimes the hemodynamic disturbances aren't detected until the stress test in the stress test, unless there's a 50% occlusion to the artery. And many of the heart attacks, and most of the heart attacks that are in people who are famous like Tim Russert and others, where they had just completed stress tests within, like my mother, 24 hours, 48 hours, a week before, and they gave them a good bill of health, um, the flow was not uh, indicative, indicative of a 50% blockage, but that lining of the arteries can rupture with 30% occlusion, 20% occlusion. And once that plaque goes into the bloodstream, it of course can find a place to create the blockage, cutting off the flow to the heart or cutting off the flow to the brain, uh, causing the event. And a negative stress test does not mean that you did not have plaque in your arteries. And so people go through the stress test and they say, oh, you have a clean bill of health. Well, you have a clean bill of health that at this moment in time, your blood flow study did not show a greater than 50% occlusion in your artery. It does not address the drum that we beat on constantly in prevention, which is, okay, you didn't have a hemodynamic disturbance, but what you did have was a hidden uh, uh, plaque. And now some event within the next week or two uh, or month or two, that could create and attack your arteries, the lining of your arteries with inflammation. And then when that inflammation begins, which there's a lot of uh, causes, including things such as COVID and, and viruses and, and uh, other inflammatory events, starts recruiting things such as white foam cells, you know, to the place, uh, to that lining of the artery and that rupture occurs and pours out enough of that plaque into the arteries, it, it wouldn't matter if it was 40% or 30%, the event has occurred and, and more often uh, two thirds of the time you may survive, but about a third of the time you don't survive that event. And uh, so that's the flow studies. They're great, but they're not perfect. And so what we're saying, we're not saying, I, I, I can't put words in Dr. Brewer's mouth or Todd Eldridge's mouth, but we're not saying that stress tests don't have a use a use to them. But what we are saying is don't use your don't use the stress test as the only measure, uh, or even for that matter, as the gold standard of predicting and preventing cardiovascular disease. There's a series of multiple tests and and lifestyle choices that you should have. You should look to see your risk factors increase as a result of insulin resistance or as a result of, of diabetes or other factors, smoking, for instance, and lifestyle choices, uh, obesity, and, and even overweight. You look at all of these and then you do tests. There's tests. If any of you have gone through the protocols of, of laboratory testing, you can also, you can look at the genetics. You can look at LPPLA2. You can look at LP little a. There's a lot of test other than just cholesterol and other than a stress test in order to predict and understand and even using uh, carotid interval medial thickness testing to to take an ultrasound effectively of your arteries and your coronary i mean in your carotid and in your brachial to predict and to see if the case is that uh, you may have that hidden plaque so that's today's presentation uh, thank you very much uh, for that. So let me, uh, at this point, the guys will stop the share and I will go back to comments and uh, questions and we'll see uh, how, we, uh, how we may respond to it. So welcome. Thank you guys for your comments. Load them up and we'll start with Bart, Bart Robinson. Bart, by the way, thank you very much. Almost always, Bart is always early and always says good morning and uh, always very positive. So thank you very much, Bart, for, for again, being a regular listener and for starting us off right. And uh, ET himself, which cardiovascular disease and ET's uh, a species is not uh, as severe, they, they, you know, because the gravitation 
uh, and the planets that ET lives on, uh, they don't have the issue, but they still listen in. And so if you ever wonder or from the other world, they're listening in. Yes, we ET listens in and, and he phones home every once in a while and tells us when we do a good job. So thanks for the thumbs up, ET. It's actually for ET. It's just two. It's two fingers up. So pardon my humor. Uh, Martha Wright says, good morning. Uh, we always joke, always point out Martha. Martha is my aunt. She was my mother's sister. Um, and so thank you very much, uh, Martha, for listening. And good morning to you as well. Um, E.T. comes back and says, Aha, I had a stress tish years ago, and the doc just pushed me harder and harder till his nurse had to hold my rear end up, then kept pushing me till my heartbeat was 186. Uh, ended up being some kind of indigestion. Well, not only did you have indigestion, you probably had severe muscle pain in your quads for the next week or two. Um, it, speaking of which, since we're talking about Ford, um, he pushes me that way too. He introduced me to wind sprints as if we were high school basketball players still. So we, I, I exercise regularly. I think I exercise to, to, uh, you know, stress point. So, uh, a few weeks ago he said, let's start doing wind." he was doing wind sprints and he and I both are not spring chickens. I'm in my fifties. He's, he's in his, well, he's not in his fifties. We'll just leave it at that. But, uh, so we went out and did wind sprints and the wind, the, the wind sprint wasn't the problem. The next week of being unable to sit down or stand up was the problem, but th that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to stress as much as they can to get that blood flow going as much as possible to get those pictures. And it's, 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 a, it's not a fun experience at all. Um, Bart says, thank you. Thank you very much. ET got a good kick out of it. Um, and uh, Kofi Adega, uh, says, uh, hi, this is Kofi from Ghana tuned in. Thank you very much, Kofi. And, uh, thank you for joining from Ghana. As we often say, our, our listeners come from all over the world. Um, our patients come from all over the world. So, uh, we appreciate people listening and, and many of you know, may know, and we, we've talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Congratulations to Dr. Brewer. We, we tipped over the 100,000 subscribers number uh, a couple of weeks ago um our staff down in uh mobile area uh, celebrated with us you can look on our website jubilee.health and see that celebration with dr brewer and our team uh and so you guys made that possible sharing our site telling your friends and family about it watching our videos and then driving the uh, video numbers on YouTube and uh, Facebook so that more people are watching. That's all fantastic. So thank you guys very much for doing that. GC says heart disease on my mom's side. I'm 52. I do the cardiac calcium test and had a heart echo last year. Uh, those look great. And I work out hard four days a week, but what else can I do? So that's great. Uh, great question. He also says I've never had a stress test since I work out a lot. It's hard to get my heart rate past uh, 145. Well, other things you can do, uh, and this is going to sound like a sales pitch, but I would listen to one of those webinars. I think it's critical. Even I was on the phone this past week with a good friend of mine who had a heart attack when he was 60. And it was several years ago. Perfect height weight, very active outdoors. Um, just just a lot of things in his life with good health. He did not smoke. He did not drink, lived a good lifestyle. He had a heart attack at 60. Perfect height weight. But genetically, he was predisposed and he had undiagnosed diabetes. He didn't know that he had diabetes. But, you know, you just men live with whatever we think normal is, especially men do that. And they discovered that he had he had diabetes. And with diabetes, he, he, he his arteries had been inflamed and on fire for a couple of years. And even though he was doing a lot of other things correctly, that inflammation struck. He had built up plaque and he had an event. So the, what I think typically Dr. Bird respond to that is take a hard look, even though your height weight's perfect. Many people have the genetic underlying that Dr. Brewer himself shares. He is diagnosed with diabetes, even though for those of you who don't know it, he's Dr. Brewer is about six foot tall, maybe five eleven, and, and probably weighs between 155, 160 pounds. Did I mention I can't stand the man? I mean, you know, who, who, who has that? Right. But, a joke. Well, I love him. He exercises like a crazy man. He outruns me on the sprints. He, you know, he out, out lifts me in the weight room. 
He's lived that lifestyle for years and years and years, but yet still can't run from genetics. And so looking at diabetes, look, look at your insulin resistance, a uh, insulin resistant craft insulin score test uh, would be recommended to look to see if you have that. And then there's others in the prevention testing. Look to see if you have the genetics of LP little a. We often get some of our listeners that talk about that as well. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's other things to look at. So you go through, watch some of the videos that we have. You can Google uh, Ford Brewer on YouTube live and you will find a lot of videos. We have over a thousand videos out there. Many of them specifically with Dr. Brewer talking about additional tests and additional onion peels that you can pull back to look at to see if there's other risk factors that you may want to consider. In the meanwhile, but you see, you also may be perfectly healthy and will enjoy a lifetime of, of good health because of your lifestyle. And so more likely than not, you're great, but we want to continue to be great. So digging a little deep, be great. Um, father has type two GC says, I watch closely for that. So, so you're well aware. Thank you very much. Uh, David Drake says, thanks for emphasizing pre-diabetes and inflammation sources as casual factors, a uh, causal factor, excuse me. Uh, absolutely. You know, that's, that's the drum we beat. Fort Worth West side says going to schedule my CM, CIMT test. And also GC, by the way, that would be great. Uh, you can look on our channel, you can reach out to us and we'll, we'll help put you in contact with someone close to you. I think a CIMT is great. We, we use a couple of organizations who can give you arterial age. Not only can you look to see if you have under, under uh, hidden underlying plaque in, in, the, in the lining of your arteries, you can look for that. It will show it in the carotid, but you also can get a prediction of your arterial age and you can improve that. So you go look at the video, Dr. Brewer talks about his own CIMT and how he improved his arterial age uh, of life with lifestyle change. So Fort Worth says going to schedule a CIMT test through Cardio Risk Company. That's one of the organizations that we do recommend. If soft plaque is found, what does that one do to reduce or eliminate it uh, in the carotid brachial arteries? Well, I'm guessing a, a roto rooter type procedure. No, actually not Fort Worth. And I'm going to say what Dr. Brewer says because as you guys may know, I am not a physician. So disclaimer, disclaimer. I laughed. I said, I'm playing Jeopardy. Alex, I'll take disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer for 4,000. But you can go watch. He, he addresses this. Go look up Dr. Ford Brewer. Look at his own story of how he reduced his arterial plaque, improved his arterial age by almost 20 years. And it really is more lifestyle than anything. Uh, it, it is about getting sugar out of your life, get, you know, getting carbs as best as possible, get, you know, getting a balance of the lifestyle that you live. And you can actually affect most of this significantly uh, with lifestyle change. Lifestyle is not always the only answer. Trust me, if I fall over and I've got my Widowmaker block, I will do whatever it takes to do. But getting a heads up and seeing that plaque there, uh, you can watch some of those videos and he can tell you, you can watch the physician give you advice on what you can do about it. Um, ET himself, around the same time as the stress test, I had an ultrasound and nobody could tell me anything about the real results. It was measured in a way that was apparently useless. So again, someone like uh, the organization Cardio Risk, uh, would be, that's who I used when, when I did mine. And then uh, Joe Entz has one I've done with his company as well. And the life of me that is escaping me. And I apologize to Joe and his organization for forgetting, but there's, there's a couple of really good organizations that, that give you a, a great view uh, into, into that. Um, GC says, awesome info. Thank you. Uh, and definitely looking to CIMT. Um, and Martha says, we both had CIMT, which relieved our minds about the cardiovascular health. Um, there's a reason it relieved their minds is they had discovered on someone close to my aunt Martha. I won't say it was my uncle, but, uh, you know, they found some diabetes and other things. So when they dug into that, it is a relief to go, okay, that's, I've got a lot of lifestyle choices I need to make to keep that from happening, but I think it's great to look at it. Um, Awesome info. I'm Arthur. We both had C CIMT. Fort Worth West Side says Dr. B refers in his videos to the role of vitamin K2 in reducing calcium plaque in the arteries and deposits in the bones. 
it refers to having a carb, uh, carboxylate, uh, the process to getting the process working. Great. That's exactly right. His K2 video is one of the most watched videos we have. I, I, it may be a million views or so. It's just a crazy watch video. So I think Google in the K2 video, watch that. I think that's great. Eat NATO and uh, NATO and uh, take vitamin K2, MK4 and MK7. All great points. Uh, this was back in 98 and I'm still here. ET, we're glad you're here and we hope that you're still here in, what is that, 20, 23 years? Good, give them the good 23 years. Uh, Fort Worth West Side says, how does one start the uh, carboxylation or is it strictly biochemical process that we can't influence? Um, we always can influence if, if it's, you know, just by taking it and uh, there's a whole nother methylation uh, cycle study that, again, is impacted by um, things such, you know, moving that one carbon, making that one carbon cycle work from the Krebs cycle or the citric cycle all the way through to the distribution of the carbon cycle um, is a whole nother subject. I think we have some uh, information out there. I know when we interviewed the ophthalmologist uh, uh, from the University of Arkansas that did the studies on retinopathy and the improvement that they were showing in, in studies out of the Palmer Institute in Miami, he laid a lot of groundwork about uh, the biochemical process of the one carbon cycle. And I think he, at that point, pointed out, sometimes you're hurting the process. So maybe I can't increase the process, but I can stop hurting the process. And some of the underlying issues that many people have genetically again um, in their methylation cycle there, you, you may have seen some videos, the MTHFR, it's called the metatetrahydrofolate reductase uh, cycle uh, is hindered because for instance, the diet that, that many people are introducing, for instance, too much uh, wheat and bread into their cycle. And, and what's happening is they're, uh, slowing the grinding gear, you know, so those, all of those carbon cycles that if you recall, if those of you who took biochemistry, you recall those cycles, you know, that carbon has to move through different cycles. And sometimes those cycles are moving slower as a result of lifestyle choices that we made. Something as simple as smoking is going to slow that down. So go back and look at those and see, see if you can't, but it's, you can influence, you influence it to not have that carbon cycle slow down. And you can even influence it by taking some um, uh, methylation induced uh, supplements. Like I take Restore, Restore Me, uh, you can find it online, but it, it has you know the, 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 the right supplement mix between vitamin D. So for instance, high vitamin D, vitamin D is the carrier of some of that methylation over the blood brain barrier and into the vascular system. And that's how some of those eyes, those, those retinopathies were improving as a result of basically feeding uh, your, your cycle. So there are supplements you take, there are lifestyle you can stop that will help. So th there are things you can do, but there's a, that's a whole other subject you can look at. Uh, and then uh, uh, Kristen says no sugar, I try to stay keto diet, low carbs of fluids, think positive. Great. All great points. Exercise moves the blood flow around. Take it easy. Don't overdo it. Um, yes. Uh, exercise does increase and help, you know, the stamina, the increase uh, and so forth. Uh, I think don't overdo it. Usually about halfway through my workout, I go, oh, I need to not overdo this. Where's pizza and donuts when you need them? But, but nonetheless, we try to stay healthy. All right, guys, uh, if there's no other comments, today's uh, will be a little bit shorter than normal. Uh, but again, you're getting style over substance today. And, and Dr. Brewer certainly could bring a lot more to this. So if you have questions, you want to email directly to Dr. Brewer regarding these or go back and watch some more of the, the content that's out there. We recommend you to do that. We'd love you to do it. And again, keep supporting our channel, keep supporting our, our efforts. We really believe in this. You know, we're trying to make a difference in your lives. We're trying to make a difference in, in people's lives so that 
you know, I wish my mother was around to meet my last child. I wish, and so many of you have those stories of people that you just wish that you could have gotten this information to them so that they can still be with us. Well, you may be one of those people. We want to keep you around so that you're at your daughter's wedding or granddaughter's wedding and that you can live the fullest this life uh, that we have because we only get one circle around the rock with the rock around the sun in this in this life and we want to make it the best we can uh, for everyone. So God bless. Thank you guys very much. Uh, great comments today and uh, thank Gilbert and Aspen who made this run smoothly. And uh, if there's nothing else, God bless and you guys have a great uh, rest of the day.